the cleanest pendulum list you'll ever see. The most consistent pendulum list you'll ever see. And the best deck you'll ever see. I created the absolute perfect pendulum blueprint deck list for you guys. Just use this list and you're gonna win. Listen to the theory I have to say in this video and you are not going to lose your games. It's as simple as that. Whether you're good or whether you're bad, just practice the theory I'm about to preach in this video and you're simply going to win all of your games. So if you're ready for the video, hit the subscribe button, smash the like button, comment down below what the best deck in the world is and we'll get straight into the video. Let's go. Servant of Endymion, the best card in the entire deck. If you don't play Servant and build your deck revolved around Servant and Mastery, you're an absolute moron. You must play Servant, like it's not negotiable. If you don't play Servant and Jack, you're just asking to get destroyed by Nibiru, and it's absolutely mandatory as it's a one card Electrum and it protects you from hand traps. Absolutely mandatory, no questions asked. Next, Chronograph and Curtain Razor. The beauty of these cards is they work so well with Servant. They are not just turbo cards, so for example, Cerberus, it's a turbo card, but one, if you get Ash, then two, it conflicts with Servant. You don't want that. The whole deck is revolved around Servant. You must play the deck revolved around Servant, and there's no other options, okay? Like, this, this is not even debatable, all right? This is not, even if you suck at Yu-Gi-Oh! and don't know how to do combos, and even if you play Pendulum Garnet Magicians, you still must play the deck revolved around Servant, and it doesn't matter. Now, you're looking at Curtain Razor and thinking, yo, Trip, why are you playing Curtain Razor? I thought no one plays it anymore. Curtain Razor is a free spell card for Servant. I took Curtain Razor out of the deck and found that I lost more often than before. And I was thinking, yo, why have I been losing a lot lately? And I realized, wait a second, is Curtain Razor really that important? I, I realized I took out too many turbo cards. So you got to go back to the basics and play as many turbo cards as possible. And this is not negotiable. You will find your win to loss ratio go up incredibly high the more turbo cards you play. So I tried to take all my turbo cards out, but as I did, I lost more. Curtain Razor, worst case scenario, is a Black Fang Magician if you have a Foolish Burial, but you're not always going to have a Foolish or Shrine in your hand. It does not conflict with Shrine. Only idiots think it conflicts with Shrine. You don't play 50 Shrines in your deck, you play 4. And imagine the idiots that play 3 and don't play Curtain Razor on top of that. It gives you a spell card for Servant and it's a Turbo card. Mandatory. I would love to play 3, but there's no space. This is the tightest deck I've ever played in my life for Magicians, I mean for Pendulums. And it's super, super tight. Hence, look at this Magician Count. A Magician Count you've never seen in your life. Five magicians, one of each, and only one harmonizing magician. You might be thinking, yo, trip, why harmonizing magician? Only noobs need harmonizing magician to put up a board. Like, harmonizing sucks. The normal board needs four monsters. The monsters summoned up by harmonizing magician is irrelevant. The pendulum combo that I will show you at the end of the video for the people that don't know how to do the combo, the generic pendulum combo, guard dragon combo, does not need a Harmonizing Magician whatsoever. Do you understand that? Like, you need four monsters at the end of the Pendulum Summon. Harmonizing will equal the five. The card that comes out of Harmonizing will just sit there doing nothing. It's useless. It's only there for certain situations of going second or if you can't do it, whatever. And it's literally just there to make Yazi going second, which is the best card of the deck. People don't know how to play Pendulums and it baffles me that they just don't watch me play and understand. Like, it's just, I, believe me, you gotta understand. When I talk about Pendulums, I'm like Gordon Ramsay. I'm like Gordon Ramsay talking about cooking steaks. Y'all gotta listen to me and you actually win some games. Now, in terms of Magicians, let me tell you the count in terms of what's the best ones in order, okay? Number one best Magician, Time Gazer. You're thinking, Trip, are you crazy? No, I'm not crazy. The whole deck's revolved around Servant. Pen Call a Searching Time Gazer is going to be your biggest play if you have Servant because if it gets Ghost Ogre, you're going to cry. But if you put this up, Ghost Ogre becomes useless. That's why Time Gazer is the number one magician. The number two magician is Dragon Caller. You again, you're thinking, Trip, what the hell? Why? What? Well, these are the worst magicians. But let me tell you something get a brain. Dragon Caller now makes the whole Guard Dragon combo viable with Mare Mare, which you're going to do going second all the time. So now when your opponent is going to do everything in their power to stop your pendulum board, your everything board. Then you just drop a flat harmonizing or a distrudo that comes from guard dragons, by the way. Then go into Mirror Mirror and you dragon call it to target a token. You not just destroy your opponent's board, but you also guard dragon combo after doing it and easily OTK. But not many people want to do combos like that, which I'll show eventually. Dragon Pit's the next best magician. Purple Poison, or harmonizing the next best magician. And then Purple Poison last. Tell me what, what deck are you playing Purple Poison against? 
Sky Strikers is going to be useless. Orcus, nice thing gears to useless. Thunders, every Thunder deck's playing Orcus now. Pearl Poison is useless. And Orcus has been geared to, to protect the Poison effect. So Poison is useless. It's useless. A Salamangri, useless. Pearl Poison is absolutely useless. The, oh, you only want to play Pearl Poison against garbage trap decks. That's the only deck Pearl Poison is good against. But who gives a shit about some tier 7 alter gut strategy? I don't give a shit about it, and neither does anyone else. So hence, Pro Poison's garbage, I don't even know why I play it, but you need a Magician with a different name. You cannot play 2 of, we don't play Desires because it sucks. Desires allows you, Desires is great to draw 2 obviously, but playing Desires, not playing Desires allows you to be more, play more risky, and allows you to play, uh, sorry, a more risky deck build where you only play a bunch of one ounce. So you have the utility of all the pendulums in Yu-Gi-Oh, but because you play a bunch of one ounce, I'm talking like 15 one ounce in your deck, you don't have to be scared that any of them get banished. Especially the best one of them all, which is Mare Mare. You have to understand this. The combos of Mare Mare and Pendulum is insane. You guys just don't can't put two and two together. So not just the Sudo, which is accessible by every single turn by Guard Dragons, but also Harmonizing Magician, which you play six of actually, by the way. Because you play Pen Call, which is the best Magician card, which is the only reason you play Magician. If Pen Call is randomly banned, I'm taking Magicians out of the deck, period. So you need Pen Call, but the fact that Harmonizing is so accessible, you still play the one of for that reason. So now when you pendulum summon the Harmonizing, you bring on Time Gazer, you go into Yazi, and they do not see it coming. They really don't see it coming. When you have this on board, they do not think Yazi, because you're gonna have this plus a few other monsters. They don't think Yazi's coming. Yazi pop back row, Mirror Man, destroy everything, Guard Dragon combo, because Dragon Call is gonna be in the scale. Hence, it's broken. Most of the time you're at it, like, it's just absolutely amazing, man. Like, I can't stress enough how important Mirror Mirror is. And if you have your hard dry, it's not dead. You don't normal summon in this deck. Normal summons are useless. I tribute summon Mare Mare all the time, all the time, and it's absolutely amazing because your opponent does not see anything coming, especially with the fact that Dragon Call is in the scale. Now the Guard Dragon combo, two Dark Worm, one gate zero. Again, a lot of you don't know how to play without Dark Worm or Harmonizing because you suck, but if you actually learn how to play that deck properly, you'll realize drawing, Harmonize, drawing Dark Worm sucks. You do not want to see Dark Worm in your hand. Dark Worm in your hand is garbage. You have to understand that. You only want Dark Worm in your deck. If I was guaranteed, that I would not draw Dark Worm. Let's say Dark Worm had an effect that said, if I, if you draw me, put me back in the deck. If Dark Worm had that effect, I would only play one. I don't want to see that shit in my hand. You're not going to hope, you can't pray, oh, Lord, please help me draw Pendulum Call on Dark Worm. You can't pray to see that, okay? You can't hope to see that. Obviously, Pen Call Dark Worm's nice, but you can't hope to see that. Like, that's not realistic of a situation of the only reason to play Dark Worm is if you discard the Pen Call. That's the only reason I want to see Dark Worm. But if I don't see Dark Worm Pen Call, Dark Worm's a brick in my hand. I don't want to normal summon that shit. It doesn't do anything. You're gonna shrine it anyways. You're playing a 33 card deck of four shrines. You're gonna have it anyways. It's a useless card that doesn't let you clear your opponent's board. You only want turbo cards and spell cards to help your opponent negate stuff and clear the board. And that's the only reason you need it. So you play two in case you draw one. That's the only reason you play two. And you play Desire. You do not play Desire. So you don't have to be scared to banish any of that. And don't play two gate zero. People play two gate zero are absolutely fried. One Persona Dragon, you're thinking, Trip, what the hell is this? Let me tell you something. The best, absolutely by far, the best target for Seal to summon is Persona Dragon. You look at Sloth, you look at Aether, okay? Sloth is trash going second. Aether is a scale four, it's useless to draw. This is a perfect low scale, scale one. You actually have use for it if you draw it, scale one. You could pendulum summon if you draw it and it's still in a gate. Drawing it is not a negate. Going first, it's a negate with seal. Going second, if you hard draw it, going second, you pendulum summon it and it does the exact same thing as Aether. It negates a monster effect. So Aether is gonna end up banishing a monster, negating its effect because it's banished, and seal, or sorry, Persona would do the exact same thing if you draw it going second. It's better both going first or second and in your hand. So Persona is by far the best option of all targets for seal. One Jackal, one Endymion. Just play one of each, like I said, and one Distrudo. Like I said, look at how many one-ups you're playing. So as I told you, okay, you need you would rather play a more risky deck in terms of one-ups and not play Desires as opposed to take the risk to have it get banished. It's more risky and safe at the same time. The deck, because you play so few bricks, right? So like, look at all these one-ups you're playing, right? You look at all these one-ups that you're playing. There are so many one ups that are vital uh, that you end up searching all the time. And it's you get to play a better deck with less bricks like that. So now spell cards, three mastery, 
One foolish, three shrine. The people that play two shrine are, are stupid. Uh, Dark Room's not your only target to send with shrine. This is the best option going second to send anyways. Three alliance, two pen call. It's the only reason you play magicians. Literally the only reason. No reason whatsoever. Mag pen call being able to discard your useless card is amazing. It makes everything great. As, but as amazing as pen call is, the side deck is so broken and auto win that you end up siding out the magicians and it's the easiest thing to side out, uh, except for decks that you need Dragon Pit for. Uh, next, the draw cards, Upstart, three Into the Void, and three Allure. Uh, Desires is an amazing card, but if you play a deck that does not, this deck does not brick ever. Try it for yourself, it does not brick. But it does not brick because you play literally the most minimal Pendulum engine possible, and then a bunch of great spell cards. The minimum, 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 minimum engine. Plus Mayor Mayor, just destroying your opponent, making sure you always draw the most broken hands to ensure going first or second, you have the bro most broken combos first or second. Now, that's why you don't play Desires, because you, you're making your decks with every hand look so good that now even if you, when you don't draw Desires, you're not going to draw like two Black Fang or some garbage like that because you play the most minimal engine that does not brick. So if you shuffle this deck literally 50 times, I'll power shuffle it at the end of the video or another, in a future video, you are not going to brick ever. It's going to take too long. It's already 10 minutes into the video or 11 minutes. So we're going to do that for a future video. But I could shuffle this deck 50 times and all 50 are going to be broken first or second because of the way it's built to ensure little bricks as possible. Extra deck. We got Electrum, obviously, uh, and one Beacoff. You need one link two going down and way better than Lambda. You're only playing Lambda because it's effect. You're not even playing Gamma and you're not going to resolve Gamma either. A Beacoff's way better because you're actually going to resolve its effect. Its attacks are relevant when you have higher attack link twos in your deck. The Guard Dragon Package, okay? One of each of these, obviously, it's all you need. One LP, Trope, Burst, Agar, Pain, Seal. Next, Vortex, the card you bring out. You don't need Absolute Dragon. Uh, one Dragster, you can play Zeta if you like, but I prefer Dragster. Yazi Link, Arrivo, the literally the best gets to the be all and all going second. Not many of you are understanding just how powerful it is. And that's why you guys are losing. Going second, it's a win con with Mirror Mirror that's so accessible to everything. Next, another reason why you guys are losing. You guys have the shittiest extra deck of all time. You guys don't play Nightmares. I don't understand how any... I can't even fathom how a Pendulum player does not want to play Nightmares in their deck. Especially when you're playing... Like, my best combo is when you bait them into not thinking of Yazi. Harm Rising Time Gazer, no one sees it coming. A random distributor, no one sees Yazi coming in Pendulum because you idiots don't play it. But, it, which is great. For me, because now whenever I play some friends, they don't see it coming either. Just obliterate them. Ya Harmonizing Time Gazer, Yazi. Yazi, pop one card. And now you go into a nightmare, full nightmare combo, leaving one Dragon Caller. And at the end of, after popping everything with a Link Karibo like this, pop a, pop a back row. Okay? You're going to be able to pop a back row easily. You're going to be able to, to pop a monster easy. You're going to draw again, draw again. And then you can even do some a cool B-Cop combo where you get rid of some other stuff. B-Cop. And then you're going to use Yaz, uh, Dragon Caller to target the thing, make it a dragon, and then boom. And then you're going to guard Dragon Combo after popping everything. And then you're going to Vortex, and you're literally just going to destroy the Vortex Brawl Sword and then wait, like by popping everything. So that is the end, end goal, but you guys just have to understand that the combo is better and understand how to use Yazi better and you'll win a lot more. Brawl Sword, obviously. And that's 14 cards in the extra deck. The 15th card, I was thinking of putting Abramax or Appaloosa, but after realizing that Chronograph Summon will equal a 5th fifth fifth Summon, uh, and Appaloosa won't come out. I opted not to play Appaloosa anymore. And, but instead, I play Dweller. So Dweller is one of those cards where against some of the meta, you go Dweller pass and you'll be all right. So the thing is just like a, a, a option to have in case you get hand trapped up into Oblivion. Having a Dweller is great. And when you know you're basing attack that Dweller destroys, I'll go out of my way to go Dweller and like whatever. Like a, I'm not that good of a board just to ensure you win because of Dweller. Now a side deck, okay? We got to understand is this. When you go first and put up seven negates, your opponent's going to auto scoop. So they're gonna scoop before you know what they play. Hence, you're gonna have to blindside a lot more than you wish. Hence, the best blindside card in the game, Dino Wrestler. You don't know if you're going first or second. This is great in pension zone going first or second. You don't know if you're playing combo or control. This is great versus both of them. So it's the best generic side card if you don't know if you're going first or second. And on top of that, if you don't know what deck they're playing if they uh, after you're, while you're blindsiding. And you don't want to side in a beer when you're facing striker. So this is just the best generic card. That's all you side if you if you're blind siding. If you're blind siding, just play these three and you're safe. You don't need to take out too much. Take out two curtain razor and one persona dragon if you're blind siding. Only if you're blind siding. Okay. Next, you got Zephyr Nui and Divine Strike. You need this. It's not debatable. This is how you play through Dark Ruler, making Dark Ruler completely useless. So going first now, when you know you're going first for sure, like when you're 100% positive. 
you take out going when you're going first you take out mirror mirror and you take out one card of your choice that you don't like i personally like taking out purple poison so going first you'll take out a purple poison and you'll take out a mirror mirror going first you put in these two and you're gonna not end on the same combo as normal five six negates with plus a divine strike going first hence making dark ruler useless and uh, versus any deck and now you could freely use election of black without being scared of ghost ogre because you get a free negate from it next what are you scared of only big combo decks screw nibiru nibiru i'm telling you sucks it's like a hand trap you got to open it in your opening five not as your sixth and not with your seven draw cards because you play so many drop so much draw power and on top of that everyone's playing around nibiru Everyone's playing around Dark Ruler. So what? Do you, why are you gonna play Nibiru when people are, are purposely playing around it and purposely playing around Dark Ruler? So why are you playing Nibiru and Dark Ruler when your opponent isn't ready for it? What they're not ready for are cards that already came out. They're not ready for Sphere Mode and Lava Golem. They're gonna go put up some, they're facing Thunder Dragon, uh, Chris, Thunder Crusadia bullshit danger, whatever. They're gonna put up some board of uh, Appalooza. They're playing around the like, four monsters. They're gonna go Appalooza straight away. They're gonna do full combo. They're gonna do a lot of stuff. They're gonna, if you play Super Poly, they can banish it with the Trishula Fusion. So you don't wanna risk that opportunity of drawing one of these side cards and losing. But what are they gonna do when they have, they're relying on Appalooza, uh, Galatea, Crescendo, I think Gears and Hot Red. So what are you gonna, even a Lava Golem, you're gonna get rid of the Appalooza and a Hot Red. And all you're dealing with is a Crescendo. There, you get rid of whatever it may be. You get rid of uh, Galatea and you get rid of. Get rid of Galatea, even if you draw Lava Golem. Get rid of Galatea, get rid of Appalooza. And all they're gonna have left is a Tengirsu and a Hot Red, which you're gonna absolutely obliterate with five cards. So your opponent is not seeing these coming, and it's the best spot that you just draw one, and you literally you auto win. So it's just, that's the style of this deck. If you know what you're playing, you do these. Like, it's just uh, literally an auto win, the side deck so far. Now, you, there's not much space left, but you look, against Strikers, you don't wanna side, because you don't know if you're going first or second. So the rest of our back row decks, you got two Denko and two Reboot for back row decks. Plus the three Dino Wrestler that we talked about. So against back decks, you're always safe. You're safe from anti-spell. You're safe from all that. You got five stops for anti-spell. You got all this. But don't side any of these with Striker, not even Denko. And against Salamangrate, side Denko if you want. But also Salamangrate could make you go first easily. So you don't know what if you're going first or if you're going second. So don't take the risk. The Pendulum Engine is built. The main deck is built to be control right now as it is. Because you're expected to see a whole shit ton of control over combo. So the main deck is built to destroy control, and the side deck of these are way, are made to absolutely obliterate combo uh, with the idea that most people are preparing for Nibiru and stuff anyways, so you're gonna auto-win with them. Guys, that's a deck, I think it's absolutely broken, and if you try it for yourselves, you'll see just how broken it is. It's, like, it's absolutely insane, just how broken it is. In a future video, we're gonna do five or 10 test hands in a row and show you six, seven negates with every single hand and clearing boards going second. So if you liked the video, hit the subscribe button. Let me know what you think in the video below, and we'll see you in the next video. Peace.